Well, you can't do this in a car, but well, not get away with it. So I'm off to see a client in Cardington. That's about three and a half miles from Bedford, where I live. Actually, Cardington's quite a famous place. In the 1700s, a man called John Howard lived there, and he was um, a major force in prison reform. In the 1920s, um, the R100 and 101 huge hydrogen-filled airships were built in equally giant hangars in Cardington. And in very recent years, hybrid air vehicles made their home in Cardington and were responsible for building helium-filled airships. So anyway, Cardington's where we're heading for. One of the reasons I like this journey is because we've just left one of the very short pieces of road that I'll need to be on for the entire three and a half miles. We're heading towards Bedford's River, the River Ouse, and to this area, which is relatively new, called Riverside South. So there are some eateries, ZZs, I think, Wagamamas, other bits and pieces. There's a hotel and residences above the shops. This bridge coming up on the right, the footbridge, has loomed large in local politics. It's not what we ordered, it was delivered anyway. It's a great big clunky thing compared to the uh, diaphanous structure that was proposed. But anyway, it keeps your feet out of the river. Perhaps you'll agree with me that this is just an engaging way to travel. Engaging in a relaxing sense, not in a high stress traffic sense. This is um, a walking area next to Bedford College. Often rich with a redolent fragrance of uh, unspeakable smoking materials. I'm always paranoid about catching my head on the underside of this arch and snapping my neck and being paralysed for life, but um, I'm not telling you that, of course. Coming up on the right is a rowing club. Uh, when I was about, just here, when I was about seven or eight, my brother would work there on Saturdays, uh, helping people get in and out of their hire boats, and I'd spend the day with him and eat free ice cream. OMG, I couldn't believe it. This whole area of Bedford is called the Embankment and it's the it's in the centre of the town and it runs either side of the River Ouse as it snakes through Bedford. And it's very popular with people to eat lunch at lunch times or to uh, just go for walks at the weekends. And you can see um, how it's a really positive experience at either end of um, a tutoring session, which is also, certainly in this case, a really positive experience. So it's, it's not overstepping the mark to say that it's life enhancing to ride a bike to work and home again, at least when the weather's nice. Don't come near me, I've done nothing to you. This is one of Bedford's two, I think, bandstands, and it does get used in the summer. Coming into view on the left there, Bedford's Suspension Bridge, which I think is Victorian, I'm not sure. This
this is another boathouse owned by a local school. <laughs> this bridge on the left was opened by Prince Charles and um, in those days um, it was uh, christened as Camilla's Passage for some reason I don't understand. Now, keep your eye open for what's happening under the tree on the right. You see it? Well, what they're doing is photographing a lady who looks um, to be uh, Asian um, and she's dressed fantastically in a bright metallic orange coloured traditional costume. Um, just a glorious little cameo. Um, and again, something you can enjoy when you're on the bike that you can't really enjoy on the road. This little white, ugly, stunted, blunty bridge I'm about to cross has been um, has been here for as uh, certainly as long as I can remember, um, and it crosses not actually the ooze, which is ducked down to the right, but um, a, a part of the river that was diverted to feed um, a, a swimming pool, an outdoor swimming pool called Newnham Swimming Pool in those days. Um, that outflow con continued on the right. It's all gone now and been replaced on the left um, by something called Aspects Leisure Park, which is eateries, bowling alley, and in fact is now largely disused. The stream on the right is very shallow and very fast flowing and has a, a, a gravel bed um, and you can see if you're careful and quiet kingfishers perched on trees overlooking this part of the river which is rather lovely. We're crossing that stream now and we'll turn left onto a track here which is puzzlingly straight until you realise that it used to be a railway line which took coal to um, the Goldington power station before it was demolished many years ago. I can still remember when it was there and I can remember seeing trains go down this track. On the right of this track these days is a man-made lake um, turned into a marina called Priory Marina you can see the boats on the right hand side these long relatively uneventful stretches um, have a different kind of appeal to me there's nothing much to divert your attention and so you can turn your thoughts inwards or with practice turn them largely off which can be very refreshing especially with a brain like mine now we're turning into the Priory Marina car park we're getting some misting on the um, on the camera case and in fact it's beginning to rain Well at this point I'm putting on my rain trousers, the rain got a lot worse and the footage is quite poor um, because of the rain and the misting inside the camera case. So since we've blown 10 minutes I'll leave this one here but I'll make the return journey from Cardington 
which is about a mile from where we are now um, and I'll upload that very shortly um, it will have stopped raining by then so we'll get the second half of the journey in the opposite direction and then we'll have the whole story so if you're, if you're up for that then what a strange human being you are but that'll come out shortly thanks for watching